welcome to the second video in the series on steps in anodonic treatment and in this session we'll be focusing on pulp vitality test in the previous video we discussed about the importance of an accurate diagnosis one of the key decision making steps during the diagnosis which determine the treatment plan is the pulp vitality test pulp testing basically involves an attempt to generate a response of the sensory neurons to external stimulus before we move on to the details of various pulp test we need to understand what does sensitivity and specificity of a test mean sensitivity is the ability of a test to diagnose a tooth with disease that is non vital tooth while specificity diagnoses a tooth without the disease or which is vital heat test has a higher sensitivity while cold test has a higher specificity what does this statement mean it means that heat test has higher chances of diagnosing a non vital tooth while cold test has higher chances of diagnosing a vital tooth no single test will ever give us the accurate status of the pulp it has to be used as an adjunct to clinical and radiographic examination so let's start by discussing the cold test what actually happens when we do this test cold testing causes contraction of the dentinal fluid within the dentinal tubules resulting in a rapid outward flow of the fluid within the tubules the a delta nerve fibers within the pulp dentin complex get stimulated and they respond by giving you a sharp pain and this works on the principle of hydrodynamic theory which was put forward by branstrom the cold test can be used to differentiate between reversible and irreversible pulpitis if the patient feels a lingering pain even after the removal of the stimulus it suggests an irreversible pulpitis while if the pain subsides immediately it suggests a reversible pulpitis while testing multi rooted teeth we need to be very careful as they may respond positively to cold even though only one root actually contains vital pulp tissue now coming to how do we perform a cold test when testing with a cold stimulus we must begin with the most posterior tooth and advance towards the anterior teeth this will prevent any melted ice water dripping in a posterior direction which may cause stimulation of other teeth thereby giving you a false response it can be done by wrapping a silver of eyes in wet gauze and placing it against the buccal surface of the contralateral tooth first and then on to the tooth in question another way of performing a cold test is by spraying ethyl chloride onto a cotton pellet and placing it on the buccal surface of the tooth ice cold water is another useful and inexpensive test the tooth under investigation should be isolated with the rubber dam and then bathed with water from a syringe cold test should be applied until the patient definitely responds or the stimulus has been applied for a maximum of 15 seconds now how do we check the vitality of a tooth under a crown in such situations we can use dry ice or carbon dioxide snow since it has a temperature of minus 72 degrees celsius the coldness is carried through the surface of the crown to the tooth next we come to the heat test which is based on van hasel's theory quite opposite to the cold test where the dentinal tubules contract during a heat test the arteries expand because of which there is an increase in the pressure of the capillaries resulting in the stimulation of the nerve fibers now let's look at how to perform a heat test one of the ways is by using a stick of heated gutta percha in this we need to apply vaseline onto the teeth first and then a gutta percha stick is heated with a naked flame or an electrical heater until it becomes soft and glistens and is then applied to the surface of the test tube now one problem with the gutta percha test is that we cannot control the temperature or we cannot maintain the temperature so we can use a delivery device to maintain the gutta percha at a particular temperature this test may be difficult to use on posterior teeth because of limited access hot water is another method to perform the heat test the tooth under investigation should be isolated with the rubber dam first and then bathed with water from a syringe one disadvantage of the heat test is that excessive heating may result in pulp damage and prolonged heat application will result in biphasic stimulation of the a delta fibers initially followed by the activation of c fibers which can result in a lingering pain therefore heat test should not be applied for not more than 5 seconds however inadequate heating of the gutta percha stick could result in the stimulus being too weak to elicit a response from the pulp this brings us to the end of the heat test and the cold test in the next video we'll be discussing about electrical pulp testing thank you